So this is the very, very first copy, which I was delivered this morning. I, there we go, that's it. I like Christmas. Indeed. <laughs> oh, well, that's there beautiful. We beautiful to start with, I agree. Lovely. Oh, that is sensational. Most handsome. Uh, sort of of the bird. See, it's it's Gould's design, but but modern. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you can imagine that recreating the the feel and the, the spectacular nature of the bird, but in blocking was yeah. was quite a problem. I give you given you copy number D. I hope <laughs> <that was. laughs> Lovely. Oh, look at the real things. Here are the plates. I'm going to have to stand up for this. Well, it's abs absolute. I mean, that seems to me very near perfect, really. Because you really. I mean, I know these plates well enough, and I know the hand colouring of well enough. Of yeah. course, hand colouring does vary, but I would be hard put to it to know that wasn't hand colouring, and it's beautiful. Oh, that's great. Oh, they are. When you get um, birds of of this beauty, an artist of this competence. Ah, oh, look at that. The paper has a slight texture, it une has a, unevenness. It, it has, yes, it's a sort of felt mark, and it comes with this particular type of paper. It's called Modigliani, it comes from Italy. I got every sympathy with these artists because the people who drew it haven't the faintest idea of, as to how the birds, as it were, looked in that, life. That, this is the Trois Voir. This is my favourite. I mean, it's this incredible, outrageous colour. It's, ac it's accurate enough, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. but the the curious thing about those um, quills, when I first saw them, these upturned quills, I thought it was because the bird had been badly packed, as it were, yeah. and, and the artist had seen. But but mm. it's not. It's like that. And I uh, and we filmed this one. Actually, it was the first time it was courtship had been filmed, and we discovered what it does with the quills. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it does with the quills? Rattles them together? No. No? No. The female sits on top of a, of a, a snag or a dead mm -hmm. a, a, a pole of a trunk, tree trunk. And the male comes up and he, and he goes round and round this snag, calling to her, and she's looking around like this. Mm -hmm. And then he makes a run up, and when he gets to the top, he turns right round and does that <laughs> in her face with the quills. <laughs> Which she finds deeply sexy. Nobody knew that yeah. until we filmed it. Yeah. But did you had you seen these plates before you'd ever seen any Birds of Paradise yeah. in the wild? Yes, no, oh, absolutely. I so saw, them, really, saw them as a boy. You saw these as a boy. And they made a huge impact on me. I, I couldn't believe that this was na natural. I, yeah. I mean, I thought, how, how could you have birds like that? Yeah. Oh, this like is that. an amazing one, isn't it? Is this, this is the biggest, isn't that right? Uh, just well, not quite. It depends how no. you call big. No. I mean, the longest is a thing which wasn't discovered uh, at the time that no, these were done, called the ribbon tail. But this is pretty big, it's, and and of course he didn't. That, that big? Something like no, that? no, 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 that, that, that big, big, that mm. big. But the artist had no idea how it displayed these epaulettes. He couldn't know, and indeed, again, nobody knew until oh, like a ten days ago. What ten years ago? What actually happens? is that these epaulettes, which are on the shoulder, when, when it displays, this bird erects these epaulettes yes. and puts them right in front of his face, so that he's just peeking out, and then he slowly goes like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I think actually this is this is rather more handsome because <laughs> it looks rather grotesque. And the, and the epaulettes were what were left on the original corpses that were oh, brought yes. back by Magellan's. Uh, oh no, no, Magellan didn't bring these back. No. Magellan brought the, birds, the greater bird of paradise. Oh. This is a sickle billed bird of paradise. Yes. Uh, so when you went to see them for, for real in New Guinea, you already had this. This, this was really your, the impression you had. Absolutely. And, and these are these plates are so spectacular. Did the birds seem even more spectacular, or spectacular in different ways, perhaps? Yeah. Well, that's 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 the greater bird of paradise. That's the one that Magellan saw, yes. and um, brought back. And uh, certainly, I've seen those displaying, and when they display. They erect these plumes in a great f golden fountain above mm -hmm. their back when a female arrives. Um, and of course, it's very difficult to get close to these because they display right in the top of a tree. Um, and so you have to be a pretty good tree climber or something if you're going to get right yes. up to the top. Yes. Um, but I've, uh, with long lens work, you can see the detail of how they do it. And, th and that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good of them, um, representation of them not in display, just in Yeah, the sure. And this is the one actually called Paradisea apoda. Apoda. Apoda, meaning legless. Legless, because Magellan, uh, the, the skins, which are traded all over the Far East yes. as currency. The skins were currency. The skins the are currency. Yes. And in order to show off the plumes, they, the, in treating the current, the, uh, the skins, they cut off the legs mm -hmm. and they cut off the wings. Yeah. And when they finally got to Europe, people said, you know, why have they got no legs? And the local people had told Magellan that the reason they had no legs was that actually they floated in paradise and they didn't need Which legs. Which is fine. Fine. Yeah. So Linnaeus, who gave them the name Paradise a but Poda. This, yes, which is 250 years later. And he's still calling it a Poda. Yeah, I think so he had his tongue in his cheek. Ah. Yes. I'm giving them names for yeah. the first time. Uh, that's th that is the famous plate, and I reckon that actually mm. it's one of the classical, beautiful plates. And I, I saw that as I was uh, about 10, mm. and I've never, never forgotten it. And it's such a wonderful composition, isn't it? I yeah. mean, wonderful with these wires. These, these are naked quills coming from the tail. And then the, and, and then the composition there. And, and William Hart, who drew it, Gould was only the publisher, of sure. course. Hart drew it, uh, and I reckon that's one of his finest, most beautiful plates. That's that's a marvelous bird. Um, blue plumes instead of uh, of gold, and it that has one of the most remarkable of all displays. When that displays, it's sitting there on its branch, and then suddenly goes whoo, and it falls over backwards. <laughs> and hangs upside down with all the plumes and it makes a noise like a malfunctioning electronic apparatus. I mean, you can't imitate it. High pitch, warbling, extraordinary electronic noise. How it produces, I, I really don't know. And it just trembles, and hangs there, trembling. It's one of the great sights. One of the great sights. And yeah, I mean, I must say you've done very well because some of these are iridescent and you've, yes. you've conveyed the impression of iridescence extraordinarily well. I think the original hand colourists used to mix in varnishes and things in with the paint. Did they? I th that's what it looks like. They get yeah. a kind of sheen to them. Oh, these are gorgeous. Oh, that's a little one there. That's a marvellous thing. <laughs> Look at that, those quills, you see, they, they have a little bit of the, of the side uh, feather texture on them, so they're blue. And they have this blue skull cap. Who else? What other yeah. bird thinks of uh, that having and being bald and ultramarine is sort of sexy? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so this is, this is the same bird. This is its green tummy. Yeah. So that it's sort of like traffic light. That's right. And this is the, the inevitably Female. rather... And that's how you can tell... I mean, when I first saw them as a boy, I thought, these are all so wildly different. You know, some with plumes from here, some mm. blue, some, but, and some with bald heads, and some... You know, how can you call them all the same yes. family? Mm. And the only reason, the reason that convinced me as a boy was that the females 
Mm. All the same. Mm. Oh, well, not the same, but they're very, very similar. I mean, with bar yes. across they tend to have something right around the back of the neck, or well, hardly or, that. Or, hardly yes. that. Bird, bird, bird birds do. Oh, this is now, ludicrous. That, well, that's a wonderful thing. Huh? Now, that bird actually displays, that, and Gould couldn't have known it, and it, nobody did know it until about a few years ago. Mm. That bird uh, displays always in on one particular site, a male will have his favourite place, and it's a liana, and he chooses the liana like a, and uses it like a trampoline. That is to say, he perches there, and then he starts pumping up and down, so the whole bar is yeah. going up yeah. like that. And, and then these, it, things, then are, these things, things, it suddenly yeah. throws them forward and yeah. thrashes them up and down. I mean, you know, unbelievable. <laughs> it's a pleasure to turn the pages, actually, I must say. Now that bird has never been filmed, mm. it's, and its display is not properly known. Mm. In fact, I better be careful. But, but as far as I know, is there's been no detailed display uh, description of the display, and I would yearn to film that bird. Mm. Well, thank you for for telling us so much of oh. your experience and knowledge of the birds. Oh, it's been great. Well, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you very much.